Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Monday Morning Mojo. I'm Anna Gibbs, and you are in the right place if you are looking to live a bigger life and if you're looking to find ways to basically get out of your own way so you can live that big life. And today I am joined by my friend and colleague, Molly DeMatos. If you know Molly, she is, I call her really just a force to be reckoned with. I think she has probably as much energy as I do, maybe more. And she is a coach with MAPS. She is actually a head coach with MAPS and also a bold coach, which we'll explain a little bit of that for those of you who might not be familiar with bold. And she is also leading a mega real estate team in Asheville, North Carolina, and has been doing that for many years. And she's also a certified instructor with Keller Williams University and the Dean of Case 4, which is another educational arm helping people really get the foundational uh, pieces of entrepreneurism in real estate and preparing them to get their real estate license. So what you can tell already is that she has a passion for helping people achieve at a high level. She has a passion for education and I am excited that you're here. So welcome Molly DeMatos. Thank you, Anna. It really, it's an honor to be here. And I was listening to my intro, I was like, oh my gosh, I do a lot of things. That's not on accident. It's, that's quite, thank you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it, it surprises us when we hear someone else say all the things we do in a day or in our, in our career or whatever we might be committed to. And I think like a lot of people listening to the show, there definitely is a large segment of real estate agents listening to the show, as well as other entrepreneurs and business people. And many of us are not driving in one lane. And that is what is so exciting about, I think, being an entrepreneur is that you can have more than one interest. But since you started there, how do you <laughs> manage all of it? Is there any kind of trick that you want to share or hack or thought on that? I'm going to talk about a couple things with this because I think this is so important. It's super relevant to me right now, too. I was at Gary Keller's mastermind just this week, and he even asked the question. He said, what is enough? And when we talk about enough and we think about enough, I, I'm not talking about just like money or achievement. I really mean in, in your own world, how do you define enough for yourself and how you show up? For me, it, it's defining capacity. And particularly as a mindset coach, I spend so much time thinking about capacity as it relates to enough, to use Gary's words. So really, first of all, just defining what that looks like to you. And then depending on what that answer is and what your goals are, I then go straight to calendar. As far as the education <laughs> coaching piece of this, I am a firm believer. My life hack is that dang thing. If my calendar doesn't match my goals, it's probably not going to happen. In bold, we teach these great bold laws. And one of my favorites is if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. Yes. <laughs> and so I live by that too, Molly. So much, I, I, I think a lot of people around me have learned that they can't reschedule. They need to keep their appointment because I'm so time blocked. Yeah. I can't guarantee that four o'clock is going to work for me. That's because right. You were on at once. I understand that. Yeah. And actually, really massive amount of freedom comes from that. I think people. Doesn't it? I don't think yeah. people understand that. Talk about that for a minute. So I think when people think about time blocking and a, and a regimented schedule, they, they think of it in like the, the mindset from being restricted. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, when you know exactly what you're supposed to do, exactly when you're supposed to do it, it makes everything else easier or unnecessary. Totally. So if I know that to, to be who I desire to be in this day or achieve what I want to achieve in this week, these are the things that are my non-negotiables. They have to show up in my schedule. So the great freedom comes from knowing here it is. I don't have to worry about procrastination. I don't have to worry about failure. I don't have to worry about waking up on Saturday and say, holy crap, my whole week was a waste. I know because I'm very intentional with my calendar that in order to achieve my goals, there's specific things that need to happen. They go in my schedule. And beyond that, you build in that important family time, that flex time. Yeah. You know what I find to be true about this is that 
you become more efficient in how you use your time. So in other words, mm -hmm. you actually can get through an activity or whatever is the focus in 30 or 30 minutes or an hour. And without that, you might be taking 90 minutes, two hours to do things or it's interrupted and you're just all over the place. So you're actually just oozing time all over. And when you are time blocked and you become more focused, you leave yourself with more free time. So That's exactly right. It's like that myth of multitasking. If, if you don't believe Coach Anna and I, I want you to pick <laughs> a pile of pennies, get 50 pennies mm -hmm. and 50 paper clips. And I want you to stack the penny one penny and then clip the paper clip to the next paper clip and go back and forth, time yourself, see how long it takes. And then knock down your tower of pennies, undo all your paper clips, and then do it again, except the first time, stack all the pennies first, and then put all the paper clips together. I promise you, you'll be so much more efficient. Efficiency comes with patterns. Yeah. And it's, or just save your time and just trust Anna and I on this one. Yes. <laughs> Or, or you could hire someone to just stack the pennies for you. And we call that leverage, but that's another yeah. episode. <laughs> I was taking some notes. That's why one of the things I love about doing the podcast is I'm learning too, or just getting ahas too. And yeah, got my notebook too. <laughs> yeah. And when you said, what is enough that Gary had shared that recently, what is enough? I think that's an important question for us to always ask, because I think for anyone who is wired to be a driver or an overachiever or whatever label you want to put on it. I think we are always excited to take on more opportunity. I'm excited to take on challenges. And yet you do have to sometimes take a time out and just really ask yourself, what is enough? And it's hard for me. That's the thing that I'm, I'm sharing. It's hard for me because I do believe I'm such an opportunity magnet or someone who wants to contribute and you do have to be able to say, if I do one more thing, do I become less efficient and everything else or less valuable to whoever it is I'm already working with? Holy cow. Yeah. Like the, what do they say? The dabbler or the master. Yeah. And it depends on how you want to show up. There's so many different ways of thinking of this. I know that Mark King was one of my, is one of my great mentors and he taught me, and I know that he learned this from someone else, but he's who I heard it from. You hear things a million times, but you don't really hear it until one moment and then you mm -hmm. get it forever and he taught me you're either preparing yourself for your next opportunity or robbing yourself of it at any given time depending on the choices you make in that moment sure and, and it's so true yet there's always this line of, of capacity like we talked about before mm -hmm. of enough and of stretching yourself and and that's just part of the mindset journey and here's the trick of it you're gonna fail there's going to be times where you will bite off more than you can chew and you go, holy crap, oops, that's too much. We're talking about enough. This is too much. And yeah, you have to give yourself grace to know that's going to happen. Definitely. However, wouldn't you rather do a little too much and be able to backtrack and say, all right, lesson learned, rather than say no to something that could have been exactly what you needed? Yes. Yes. Everyone, welcome to my coaching session with Molly Demanos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am hearing you loud and clear. So Molly, let's talk about something that you uh, mentioned as well, which is you've said it a few times now, mindset. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know in our world at Keller Williams, we talk about mindset a lot. I do. And I realize not everyone might understand what we mean when we say mindset or may have their own interpretation. How do you okay. define mindset? And, and then the second question is, why is it so important? So... I define mindset. Actually, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal it from one of my favorite authors, Jeffrey Gittimer. He writes these cute little books. I like them because they're full of like pictures and the words are big, so it doesn't take long to read. And he wrote this book called The Little Gold Book of Yes Attitude. And he says positive attitude is defined as the way you dedicate yourself to the way you think. Hmm. The definition for a negative attitude is exactly the same. <laughs> So that I love his quote on attitude because I think that attitude and mindset are hand in hand. I think that they are brother, sister, apples to apples. I think that the attitude that you choose to adopt is the way you think all the time. And so your mindset is just the way you think, the way you condition yourself to think, the way you choose to think, 
sometimes the way you default think that is your mindset. And so I believe that comes from how you dedicate yourself to the way you think. If you consistently have habitual thoughts, feelings, and actions that are rooted in negativity or self consciousness or old trauma that maybe brings you there. I'm not saying that this is anyone's fault. It just mm -hmm. could be where you live, your programming, right? right? Then you're more susceptible to negativity. It shows up more. Whereas if your mindset is in tune with more positivity, solution-based thinking, problem solving, the silver lining, a lot of people call it, then you're more conditioned to be able to have a positive mindset. And the good news is that neither are intuitive. You're not born negative or positive. You're not born with a great mindset or not. I'm so glad you said that because I've been a coach now for 14 years and that's come up for some people in conversations where I'm just, this is just the way I am. I'm just wired this way. And that's where the opportunity starts, right? To work with them, to help them see it differently. So let's unpack that a little, because okay. I'm sure someone is listening to this right now saying, really? So give us a little bit more about the, the positive, the negative, and the fact that we can move from that mindset to the other multiple times in a day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really fluid. And so let's just talk about bold for a second, because this, this is where my mindset journey really intentionally started. I didn't necessarily realize that I grew up in an environment that cultivated positivity and solution-based thinking and open mindset. That's part of my programming. I grew up with wonderful educators who were always, everything was a lesson, everything was teaching. I really was very fortunate to grow up in an environment where failure was considered a learning opportunity. And so I, I understand completely that I'm from a place of privilege when it comes to my conditioning around mindset. However, I was Ooh, 29 before I really heard the word mindset and mm. applied it to intentional growth. And as Gary Keller calls it, the commitment to self-mastery. So when you start learning about it, just like anything, it's like going to the gym. You know that going to the gym is going to be good for your health. Your doctor tells you you should do it. And whether you want to do it or not, you want to be healthy. So darn it, you go and you buy the cute Nike shoes and your matching outfit and your Lululemon and you make the appointment and you go into the gym and something got you there in the beginning, right? You made that yeah. choice. But then after your first session, you're sore. So immediately your brain is, this is hard. We don't want to do it. Everything was fine before. You're not actually that chubby. You're cute. It's fine, right? Everything happens in a way that, that wants to pull you back to where you've been. And that's what mindset really is. It's conditional or habitual thoughts that drive your actions. If you have conditional or habitual thoughts that do not serve you, your growth or your goals, then it's time to go to the mind gym and you've got to be really intentional about working it out. You're not born inherently anything. If yeah. you know that being more positive or more solution-based or more open-minded or calmer or more patient, insert mindset journey here. If becoming better at one of those things would help you reach your goals and who you want to become, then it's time to go to the mind gym. Got to and that, my friends, is why mindset is so important, right? You answered that second part of the question because it really does determine so much of your results, if, if not all of your results. The general and statistic we work with, Anna, is that 90% of your success in anything is the mindset you have going into it. If you sure. think this upcoming weekend is going to stink because your sister-in-law is a pain in the butt and your grandma's going to talk, if you think that way, you're going to create an environment that proves you right. Yeah. Your mindset is incredibly powerful. Let me ask you this question. So you do come in with a lot of energy and positivity and optimism. And has that worked to your advantage most of your life? Do you find that some people maybe have a little bit of a challenge with all of that? Maybe I'm asking for a friend because I, I put myself in that category too. And I know sometimes I've had to learn to manage my energy without selling myself out either, without changing who I am. Have you had that experience too? Yeah. So here's the great thing. 
Your mindset belongs to you. It's yours. The cool thing is that it exists up here. My mindset, my open-mindedness, my positivity, all the good things that I've been working on and continue to work on, they live here no matter what is showing externally. My energy though, it is, it's important to understand how you show up. This is probably one of the lessons that has been the hardest for me to learn, adopt, and grow through and continues to be something that surprises me every day. You've got, I would call it nuance. So mm. understanding how to nuance how you show up without talking yourself out of it. Many of you have probably know this poem that was adapted um, into the Coach Carter movie, but our deepest fear is not that we are yes. inadequate. Our deepest Very fear easy. is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. You playing small does not serve the world. I keep this in front of me constantly because it's a balance, not only on how you show up where other people are going to be able to meet you, but not dimming your light because it's so freaking bright either. Sometimes people need to see that. Yeah. And as long as you're not consistently, this is an important word, alienating people because your ego is brighter than your energy. That's what you got to be careful. As long as that's not happening. So then, good, Molly. So good. It's been a journey, my friend. I read a lot of books and the so ego good. is the enemy is probably one of my favorites. I, I love all Ryan Holiday and I got myself this little tri-pack. Still on Ryan, okay, so we're going to, we'll put a link in the show notes. It's a pack of books by Ryan Holiday. So yeah. uh, that's awesome. A trio of books. Be so Molly, to... how, how do you coach someone or what have you done to help someone who might come into a conversation with you and say, Molly, it's not a mindset problem. You don't understand. It's a really bad market. It's a really tough time right now. It's everybody else. I'm just paraphrasing. It's not me. It's them, right? Where they're just determined to put the association with all these external factors and they're not able to see that the mindset is still at play. So how do you help someone see through that? A couple of things here. First and foremost, you're not alone. The mindset journey and conversation is an incredibly difficult one. It's not for the faint of heart. There is no finish line. There's no trophies. There's no medals, right? The the only prize is who we become along the journey. And the journey is going to include tough spots. I don't know anyone who made it to the top of Mount Everest and said, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> oh, I should do that again. <laughs> right? It takes hard work. Sometimes giant gaps to figure out how to get across. Sometimes you have to go backwards to go forward. So First and foremost, anytime you're stuck with anything, the first thing is to just give yourself some grace and sit with it for a minute, not long. In yeah. the one thing, Gary and Jay Papazan teach about the victim versus taking responsibility. That's a really good page to reference because the fact of the matter is we will all be incredibly responsible in certain moments and we'll all fall into victim mode in certain moments. The trick is how quickly can you move yourself out of victim and back into responsible. So that's the kind of the first thing I would say. Then I would really just make sure that the conversation goes to where do you want to go with this? Hmm. Because as a coach, I think a lot of times people expect us to have the answer. And truly as coaches, our responsibility is knowing that the person across from us is a whole human and everything they need to cross this gap or build this bridge or get to the next phase, it already exists within yes. themselves. It's only our job to help them discover it. Yes. So talking about the word resolve, I think oftentimes can help people. Mm. So if we only control two things, our thoughts, and then what we do about it, our actions. If those are the only two things that we fully control, then certainly in something like a tough real estate market or a tough relationship, all the things that are outside of our control can certainly feel like they're falling down on us. Mm. Yet when we come back to the fact that 
If we always blame the weather for missing out on fun things, we'll never do fun things. If we always blame our marriage for bringing us down, we'll always be down. If we always blame traffic for being late, we'll always be late. Anytime you give control to something other than you, then you're losing your power. Yes. So We've talked about that here. You yeah. actually get your power back by taking responsibility of how you react and how you think. And when you can just bring it down, the weight of the world and all the things that are going wrong can seem too much until you remember, I control this and I control this and I control this. And that's yes. And sometimes the simplicity, the peace of that, the resolve, I love that word. When you resolve yourself to know all I've got right now is what I think, what I say, and what I do. And those are up to me. I think then the clarity can come back to, okay, thanks, Coach Anna. You're right, as usual. <laughs> It is my mindset. And if you're stuck in your stinking thinking, as the amazing Zig Ziglar would say, yeah, it's okay. Give yourself a minute. Part of my coaching world, I talk a lot about what victims wear. What victims wear, Coach Anna? Victims oh, wear- putting me on the spot now. What do you they don't wear? know, it's okay. Victims wear poopy pants. <laughs> and victims throw pity parties. And the key with mindset is it's okay. You're going to wear some poopy pants. I wear poopy pants sometimes. I throw a pity party. I think that's important yeah. too, right? To, no, I don't want to say normalize it, but for everyone to know, like you have those moments, right? Yeah. You're I have those moments. Pants. You're going to throw the pity party. The, the key is knowing I put the pants on. Yeah. I right. the party. So how that long do I want to sit in this stuff? Mm -hmm. And how long am I going to allow myself to be here? Yes, that is the truth because you really, again, you have to understand as humans, we're going to feel those emotions, but we get to decide what to do about it. Mm -hmm. How long will I stay here? And then what do I need to do to get myself out of it? Sometimes for me, it's questions. What am I to learn from this? Mm. That's been a really powerful one for me. I go back to control. A lot of times I'll ask myself, what am I trying to control in this situation that I shouldn't? Is there a lesson that you'd be willing to share? Is there something that you maybe have struck out against or failed at? And, and what, what has been a lesson that you've learned in, in the process? Oh, girl, if we were going to sit here and talk about all my strikeouts, <laughs> we would need 17 more hours to get through just the last year. Yeah, I would say probably the thing that sticks out for me the most is how I respond to other people. So in bold, we talk about SNIOP. That stands for being susceptible to the negative influence of other people. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily fall into the trap of a, a traditional SNIOP of letting other people bring me down. What I've noticed though, is the more I grow in my mindset journey, the less patient I have become for folks who aren't right here with me. Because I'm like, man, if only you could this, then you'd be this. If you could just see blank, then you'd be blank. And what I realized is I've been building a bridge, a way to, no, not a bridge, a gap. I've been like lengthening this chasm and it's not been able to help me stay engaged with folks and stay relevant in a conversation. While I don't necessarily want people coming and complaining all the time because complaining equals garbage magnet, I do want to be people's teacher and to be someone who can help or bring light or just be a good friend. Sometimes just being a good friend means shut your mouth and listen. Yeah. I still love what do you love most about being a, a teacher, being a coach? And both, they're a little different, but what drives you in, in that uh, area of your life? Like I said before, my parents were educators. So I've always been really drawn to what opportunities come from teaching. Uh, my mom and dad taught me from a very young age, the best way to learn something is to teach it. And even as a younger adult, I would plug in leadership roles to be able to teach something so that I could learn it. I have a 
passion for the coaching style of leadership because it inherently changed my life. I can truly, without any doubt, say that I am the person I am today because I had coaches and mentors who helped me see the things I couldn't see, do the things I didn't think I could do, and think the way I never thought before. Mm. So by by helping people continue to open their mind and think of possibilities and at least just be willing. I, I read a book one time that said that's the key to everything is simply being willing. Uh, I find that to be such an incredible gift, both to the people I have the honor of getting to communicate with, like you, amazing Anna, and a gift to myself. It's a little bit selfish. I realize that. And man, the path to self-mastery is how are you leading yourself? Yeah. Yes. Because you really can't lead anyone else until you figure that out. You cannot. And that's my parents out there. That's mm -hmm. salespeople out there. That's entrepreneurs. That's someone in a managerial or leadership position and everything in between. Every one of us has some kind of leadership role. And if you're ineffective at leading yourself, that's going to be incongruent with leading others at the highest level. Yeah, I have, I wrote a leadership course that is available. It's shameless plug for that. There'll be a link in the show notes for that Good, too. Girl, absolutely. You're giving yeah. people resources. That's not shameless. That's helpful. Yeah, the world. Podcast, it, it's about equipping people. And that's what drives me. One of the things that drives me as a coach is that I know how my life has changed by really putting the emphasis or a commitment on personal development. And that leads to professional development and, and lots of growth opportunities. And so I think that leadership is such an important part of all of that because it is it really at the center of everything we're doing. If we're working with people, we need leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And Well, Gary just said last week, literally, I, I'm coming off of this mastermind, so I'm, I'm completely blown away. And yes, I know. I'm pretty much fantastic. So Gary Keller said, business isn't hard. People are hard. At the end of the day, I don't care what business you're in. There's probably a model that when you follow it, bango. It's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. However, insert people. And my good friend, Vache Chevalier, also a bold coach, said, Molly, people always gonna people. And so... <laughs> I can hear her say that. <laughs> See, it just, I know Mache too. Oh, that's great. It. But that's the truth. And that's why mindset is 90% of your success because there's always going to be something, whether it's people, whether it's something going on in the environment, something going on in the economy, in your industry. It's really about the way you choose to respond that determines your results. That's it. That's it. That's literally it. And give yourself some grace in learning that just because you're not sunshine and unicorn farts with everything that comes your way doesn't mean you're defective. There's certainly a time and a place for understanding how to grow within that. What right. I tell people, so Diana Kokoska, who's the author of Bold, she always said, this isn't about suggesting you put a, a smiley face sticker over your gas gauge and drive into the desert. That's not what we're saying here. Right. What Coach Anna is saying is this is about acknowledging the reality that's around you and then choosing how you will exist within that reality. Choice. How will I show up now? Now right. that this exists, how will I show up? Anna, it was embarrassing. I'm a mindset coach and I would be driving down the road in my little box, in my su sweet little space, cussing at people and just impatient, cutting people off. What did you do? I had one day where I was like, Molly D'Amato's, are you kidding me? You teach mindset. You teach how to react. You teach what you can control. And you let yourself fly off the handle for 15 minutes every morning and 15 minutes every afternoon. This is preposterous. And I know it seems a little trivial, but how you participate in here is how you participate everywhere. Yes. Because of the patterns. You mentioned patterns before. Bingo. You might think that you're in the groove when you're actually in a rut. All these things are neuropathway patterns. And if I was in a pattern, 
of being negative every time I got in the car, how do you think I might show up at a listing appointment? Or how do you think I might show up at a coaching session? So I got into a practice. I actually took a picture of my Aunt Tricia, who was a nun for 67 years. She was an exceptional person, just a light, wonderful, hilarious human being who taught me a lot about patience and love. And I put it where my speedometer is. And I started conditioning myself. I had to retrain my brain to change the way I thought about driving. So instead of the habitual thought of jerk, slow, <laughs> in and the butt, I started thinking, I hope they're having a better day. I hope nothing's wrong. I trust this person is going to be fine, right? Because people are going to people. It's about how I respond to that. So if you're going to write a story about someone, why not write a great story? Jordan Freed, who's a MAPS coach, taught me, he said, what if you always presumed the best of people? What if you always thought, and this is my mantra, they're doing the best they can with what they have in the moment they're in. What if you believed that to your core? I want everyone who's listening to this for the rest of the day, no matter what someone does to you or around you, presume that's the best they've got and see how it changes how you feel. Your inner peace, it's magic. I love that. If you take away one thing, that could be it today. And I think that it's about knowing your mindset creates your perception. It's how you're seeing everything. Yeah. And a shift in mindset can be a shift in how you see the world. And that can change your world. And that and that's really what motivates me to do this podcast, to coach, to teach, to be a leader. It's not about sunshine and, and rainbow farts. I like that. I may use that phrase more. It It's because I, I get asked a lot, like, you can't possibly be that positive. And not all the time because we talked about it. We're all human, but I don't stay there very long. And it's about knowing that you create your internal environment and that is leading to what you're seeing externally. It's that simple. We're writing stories all the time. And if you're going to oh, write yeah. stories, you might as well write a story that serves you. Because I don't know anyone that wakes up and is, I'm going to have a crappy day and let everyone really piss me off. That sounds fun, right? No yeah. one ever says that. However, we write these stories that create that. Instead of saying, it. just back to the car example, it's so simple. You're really saying, you jerk, you don't know what you're doing. And you're getting all that emotion and energy. Or you're saying, oh my gosh, I hope they have a better day. I'm mm -hmm. going to send up some good love for them. How does that impact you? Someone asked me recently, how am I leading differently in these last few months or this last year with all the changes in the industry and changes in the market? And it was a great question because it, it gave me an opportunity to actually think about it in this way. And, I, and my response was, I'm not. I'm leading in the same way I've always led, which is teaching mindset and creating a space for people to self-discover and equipping and empowering people and connecting them to resources, right? There's always a way to do it smarter. Mm -hmm. There's always a way to be more strategic, mm -hmm. but I will, and I believe that the market is just here to tell us how to be strategic, mm -hmm. not whether or not you're going to win. You just have to figure out how you're going to win. And um, so I'm sure you're having a lot of those same conversations as a coach in a real estate company like Keller Williams. Yeah. And in my own coaching as well, I'm coached by Kara Mall and Fritz Pollard and of course, Gary Keller. And you hit the nail on the head there, Anna. I, I, my coaches, my high level executive coaches, including Gary Keller, aren't saying much different than they were 10 years ago, mm -hmm. that, that there's opportunity in every market, are we using our filters and our perspective and our skill set and our toolbox to extract the opportunity? That's what sets us apart. Yes. The difference between high achievers and those who seem to do as much and don't achieve as much, the only difference is how they're utilizing their tools and what they're doing to perfect their craft. Nobody changed the tools, Anna. Nobody changed them. It's the same toolbox. Are you refining your skills? Mm -hmm. Are you now seeing how this tool can be used here? 
And mindset's no different. I find the bold laws, whether you're a Keller Williams agent or an entrepreneur, you can, anyone can find the bold laws on the internet. I think those are some of the greatest tools. If you're thinking, oh boy, I could use a mindset tune up, or I would love to get on this mindset path, go study the bold laws. I find myself grabbing those tools more often than not. I'll tell you guys who, those of you listening now, when you go and look at the bold laws, you're going to say, oh, Anna says that a lot. Because it becomes, first of all, it does become ingrained in, in, in what you're thinking and, and how you're communicating. And you realize you probably have seen it before somewhere else. Like it's just so universal and it's an opportunity to, again, choose how you want to show up in, in the world and how you want to think. And how you're going to use the tools, right? If you think about a toolbox, you might have 150 tools in there, but you probably got your go-to. You love your hammer. You love your screwdriver and you love your, I'm not great with actual tools. So fill in the blank, whatever. And we tend to be, we're habitual. We do the same thing with words and patterns too. Sometimes in a shifting market or in a situation where you feel a little lost or like you don't necessarily have what you need to move through, that's a really good time to spread everything out and really look and see what you've got at your disposal. Yeah, I agree. So I want to shift gears slightly to something else that I know you're very passionate about and that you also spend uh, a big p- part of your time, which is leading uh, something called K-Score. It's basically uh, a platform to help individuals who want to start a career in real estate mm-hmm. also understand what it means to have a business right. as a realtor, which is different than what other companies might teach yeah. or not teach. So tell us a little bit about what attracted you to that. And because you are definitely, you really bringing in, I think, a lot of opportunity through K-Score and a lot of structure. But again, your energy, your passion is what is really growing this to be something that is changing lives. It's starting businesses. Thank you, Anna. I'll start by saying that K-Score, I stand on the shoulders of giants. This was Mark King's vision for years. He said, What if, talk about a big thinker, what if the cost to get a real estate license wasn't a barrier of entry? What if someone who's interested in real estate didn't have that secondary barrier of entry, which is the time frame that it sometimes takes to get profitable when you own your own business? So he took those two what ifs and he built a really big world for us, one in which we're able to offer through K-Score We're able to offer a dual scholarship program where we can help folks with a career coaching scholarship through what we call KW Prep. And it is just, that is, it's like the sister course to any pre-licensing, no matter what state you're in the United States and Canada, you have to get a real estate license. And oftentimes there's a lot of things that they aren't allowed to teach you because of state regulations and whatnot. There's a lot of information that state regulators won't allow them to learn in pre-licensing education. So KW Prep is a career coaching program that accompanies the pre-licensing platform so that while you're getting the legal ability to sell a house, you're also learning what it takes to um, show up as a professional in the real estate industry. What are the five things that you need to make sure you do each day? How do you begin to tune in your mindset, connect with people, build relationships. It's been a really fun path. When Mark asked me to write that, I was completely honored. And so getting to be the coach for so many people as they explore the opportunity of the career in real estate, it doesn't mean it's going to be for everyone, but giving folks the opportunity to have a safe and fairly cost-free or completely cost-free space to explore a new career path, what a gift. Because the truth is, Anna, When I got my real estate license in 2004, it only cost $500 to go through real estate school, but I didn't have it. I was 24 years old working for the Girl Scouts and I definitely saw more in myself, more leadership capability. And so real estate felt like a really cool option. And for the first time and the only time in my life, I borrowed money from my parents. And if I hadn't had that resource, we wouldn't be talking today. So I know how important, I know a lot of people say, oh, if you don't have money for real estate school, you shouldn't become a realtor. And I I disagree. I think that the opportunity comes from planting a seed 
and giving people soil to grow from. And yeah. I'm really proud that K-Score does that by offering these two scholarships and opportunities for relationship. I'll put something in the show notes if someone wants to reach out to me, if they're interested in getting their license or wants to talk about opportunities anywhere in the country, we can help anyone. And, and if and you're I think- listening to this and you're hearing this and you're thinking, I've always, uh, please call Anna. The, the fact that you could be in relationship with someone like Anna to explore a new opportunity, my gosh, my hope would be that five years from now, she's interviewing you on this program because you become the next million dollar real estate agent. And yeah, I just- and, and the potential is there. There are so many opportunities uh, to build a big business, create multiple streams of income as a real estate agent, even just connected to the real estate industry. Yeah, um, look at us, Anna. Holy yeah. cow. If well, you, you know, if you told me 15 not... years ago that I would become an international coach, trainer, and presenter right. because of real estate, I'd have been like, you're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> right. There are so many opportunities, right, to go on to perhaps follow in the path that we're on, which is coaching and teaching or a, a million other things. So because we're talking about it, I want to make sure they have a resource uh, as well. And I love hanging out with entrepreneurs in any industry, certainly. So let me ask you this before we run out of time. What advice would you give someone who might be listening to this right now and saying, I thought about it before. Maybe I should get into the real estate industry or any business. Maybe they've always thought about starting any business because we can provide that support too. What advice would you give to someone about the mindset, the habits, all the things we've touched on? Are there any specifics? that you would say right from the beginning, if you could nail these couple of habits, this is where you're going to find success. Yes, ma'am. I sure do. I teach a beginning coaching class called Mindset Matters back to the basics. And so I'm just going to give my three tips on back to the basics for anyone wanting to develop their strengths, develop their focus, develop their mindset. It doesn't matter what career or industry that you're in or not in. This can be for anyone who simply wants to develop their strengths. And so I'm going to make sure you all know the platform for this is that I got inspired by reading the back of a shampoo bottle. And it said, I know this, it's amazing where you get inspiration. It is. It is. It says for best results, lather, rinse, repeat. Repeat. (laughs) And I had this aha. I was like, oh my gosh, the best results part comes from the repetition. Yeah. Repetition is the mother of skill. So I said, if I could narrow down mindset to just three things that if you did over and over, like lather and rinse, what would they be? And here they are. Number one is be committed and be patient with that commitment, knowing that every day you'll have an opportunity to commit to some kind of growth. My my goal when I help coach people, when I'm invited into people's world, is that they'll decide every day they're worth the effort and they'll commit to that moment and that day of finding 1% better. The second thing is to be intentional. Like we talked about before, this doesn't happen by accident. You will not wake up on the top of Mount Everest and wonder how you got there. It takes purpose and intentional planning. Do something that you know is going to purposefully grow or develop whatever it is that you're wanting to strengthen and do it every single day. That intention, that purpose, will be what paves your path. And then finally, number three is take responsibility. Yes. Take responsibility for everything you can get your hands on. It's worth repeating. You get your power back by taking responsibility for your DNA in every success, in every failure, and in everything in between. The more ownership you can grab onto, the better you'll be. And those are my three tips. That's a perfect place to wrap this up. I think uh, that was fantastic. And I'm going to just encourage anyone, because if you're like me, you're probably listening to this in the car or while you're putting your makeup on or something, and you might want to play it back because there were just a lot of really good golden nuggets in this conversation. So you may want to go back and take some notes (laughs) for sure. Molly, if anyone would like to connect with you, where can they find you? Gosh, I live in Asheville, North Carolina. Hop on over and have a drink or a meal with me. If you can't get down here or up here or over here or whatever, or you just want to connect otherwise, you can find me on Instagram. I'm Asheville Molly. 
Asheville has an E right in the middle. Asheville Molly with a Y or Facebook Molly D'Amatos, or you could just email me. It's really simple email address, M-O-L-L-Y at kw.com. Doesn't get much easier than that. Fantastic. I love Asheville. It's such a great place. A wonderful place. Yes. Are you from there originally? No, I was born. No, you're from the West Coast. We moved to Charlotte, North Carolina when I was 12. And then I got recruited by UNC Asheville to throw shot put and discus. Oh. That was 20 years ago. And uh, you you couldn't drag me away. It's it's a wonderful place to be. If I'm not in Asheville, I'm probably in Portugal, though. So come visit me. Oh, very nice. They have good wine in Portugal. Yes, they do. Yeah, that's another conversation. All right, Molly. I'll be Molly. bold there in June if you want to come over, Anna. Oh, do you need help? Yes, <laughs> okay. absolutely. We're going to talk, we're gonna talk about that offline. That sounds okay. sweet. I love it. <laughs> Molly, thank you so much for being here. This is a really powerful conversation. And I know you've definitely helped some people. And I appreciate your time. And just keep being you and doing all the great work that you do. Thank you again. It's my honor. I'm humbled to be invited. So thank you, Anna. Uh, and I want to thank all of you for listening and really coming back week after week and making this podcast such a success. You have a lot of things you could do in a day. And the fact that you take some time out with me each week is really special. And I love you for it. So I will see you next time.